Will you please turn your Bibles to Leviticus chapter 6? And like you all know, this month we've been talking about discipleship, which is really about going deeper in Christ, um, growing deeper in Christ. We're talking about discipleship, going deeper in Christ. So Leviticus chapter 6 in verse 12. And um, our focus is on priesthood. Our focus is on priesthood. How the Lord has called us to be a royal priesthood. That's what the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. It says that you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. So we belong to a royal priesthood. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Okay, so let's see what the priest does. You know, let's see what the priest does. You know, yeah. Um, yes. Maybe we can read chapter 6, verse 9, and just jump a little, just to give context to this. Leviticus chapter 6, verse 9. He says, Command Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the law of the bond offering. And it's amazing. It, this is the law of the bond offering. It is the bond offering because of the burning upon the altar. All night unto the morning, and the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. So the first thing I want to notice is this. Although the priests were allowed to serve God, the manner in which they served God was prescribed. So they couldn't just serve God anyhow. So the manner in which they served God was prescribed. The reason why is that when you attend the church, when you belong to a fellowship, where there's lawlessness, the Spirit of God may not be there. As a matter of fact, the sons of Aaron eventually got destroyed. And they got destroyed for one reason. The Bible says they offered a straight fire. That means they offered up a sacrifice that God had not commanded. And the Bible says, and the fire consumed them. That's Koran, um, um, Koran and Abu. That's what the Bible says. So, but let's go. That's what we're going to today. So the Bible says the fire should be, um, so, so that's verse 9. I want us to jump quickly. He, 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 in the next verses, it talks about the garment of the priest. That's great. But I want us to jump to verse 12. And it says the fire on the altar shall be burning. And, you know, the fire on the altar shall be burning. And, and I want us to talk about the altar quickly because, you know, just because of the kind of ministry we are and our emphasis to next level, sometimes we can become polarized towards the old testament and the reason why is that sometimes when you hear the lots of praying the whole lots of praying is a lot of people praying the old testament way so you'll hear this popular concept of altar so you know so you know um so so people say when i came to this altar and most times when they will refer to is this physical platform and i understand that in the old testament the altar was a place. So the Bible says they will go to the altar and worship. But in the New Testament, there has been a democratization of the altar. So much so, watch this now. Hey, hey. Are you ready for this? I said in the Old Testament, the priest will bring the sacrifice to the altar. Yes or no? In the New Testament, the priest is the sacrifice. I was like, wow. Oh, yeah. In the New Testament, the priest is a sacrifice. The priest is the altar. The priest is the temple. The priest is all of them. How do I mean? See, this was how Jesus Christ started it. When Jesus Christ came, what did John say about Jesus Christ? He says, behold what? The lamp of God. That what? John 1, 29, you can put on the screen. So, what was that? Was Jesus the sacrifice? Yes or no? Was he the sacrifice? Who was the priest? The Bible says he rose and took his blood to into the holiest of the holies. He was the priest. So Jesus was the priest. Jesus was the sacrifice. So in the New Testament, the priest. In the Old Testament, there's a dichotomy between the priest and the sacrifice. But in the New Testament, both the priests. And the reason why in the Old Testament, the priest could not be the sacrifice is this. Because even the priests themselves were not perfect. Why am I saying so? I don't want to have an altar mentality. What's altar mentality? Until I come to church. Mm -mm. Until. Have you not seen people? Until I come to church. That's the altar. Until I come to church. Mm -mm. 
This is what the Bible says in Corinthians. Bible says you are the temple of God. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Question, where is the altar? In the temple or outside the temple? If you are the temple of God, where is the altar? That's it. Even in African traditional religion, what makes an altar an altar is that the, door, the deity stays inside. Yes or no? So if they say this is an altar of Amadora, Amadora, the assumption is Amadora stays there. Question, you are the altar of God. Where does God stay? That's it. So you, you, you need to leave. So I don't want it to be those kind of Christians that until you come to church or touch something on the altar, I touch this now. Before you know God has answered you. No, sir. We're in the New Testament. There have been a democratization of God's presence. He's no longer in the building. He's living in us now. You know what I'm saying? So, one of the biggest things that can improve your prayers is when you begin to have faith in your own prayers. Glory to God. That would radically change your prayer life when you begin to have faith in your own prayer. But let's, let's go ahead. So, so it begins to talk about the altar. So we understand that number one, we are the altar. The altar stays within us. That's powerful. But now, he tells us about this fire and the altar. Look at this. It's, see what it says here. He says this in verse 12. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it and shall not be put out. He says the fire on the altar shall not be put out. He said the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order upon it and it shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offering. Verse 13 says and the fire shall never sorry the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar and shall never go out. The reason I'm saying so is this one of the core responsibilities of the priest is to make sure that the fire on the altar is burning. So we've, we understood that the fire is not a physical altar. He's referring to the fire within our spirits. So what kills the fire? Life. Just life. If you have a lantern and the lantern has fire in it, after some time, if you don't refill the petrol or you don't refill whatever is inside, what will happen? The fire will die out. So a lot of Christians are experiencing spiritual stagnation because they don't know that they have to renew the fire on the inside. They think if the fire is low, then God is going to change it. If the fire is high, then God is going to change it. No, sir. If the fire is going to be burning, you are the one that has the responsibility of pouring the fire and walking the fire. The question is this. Do you have a plan to keep the fire burning in your life? And things kill fire. Success can kill fire. Failure can kill fire. Delay can... See, from good to bad, they all can kill fire. And you'll see, you'll just see a Christian, you know, this guy's a Christian, very soon, he's feeling stuck in his Christian life. Why is he feeling stuck in his Christian life? And the reason why he's feeling stuck is because the fire in the spirit is going out. There's a lot of activity, but there's a switch of progress. And you must know that activity and progress are different. They're still coming to church. They're still doing all the activity. But there's no tangible spiritual progress. And the reason why is that the fire in the spirit has been, has been turned down. What you must know is the work of the priests to keep the fire burning. Say it's my work to keep the fire burning. Glory to God. I said glory to God. How, how do you? So I'm a priest of God. I'm the altar. I'm the sacrifice. I'm the priest. How do I keep the fire burning? I keep the fire burning by sacrifice. You know, when I was younger, um, <laughs> my mom was quite traditional. So when we when I was younger, we were growing up. I was growing up. Um, when it's Chris, all the ceremony, my mother would kill like a goat, a cow, all of these kind of things. And sometimes they would, you know, they would skin the animal and all of those things. Then when it's going, when the fire is going down, you just hear someone say, ah, the fire is going down, the fire is going down. Look for wood, look for wood to put inside. Because although the fire wants to stay, if the fire does not see sacrifice raw material, it will go out. Your fire is sustained by sacrifice. Sir. 
And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 5 verse 1, it says every priest is ordained of, um, for, for, um, of men for God to offer gifts and sacrifices. So the question is that, what's the first sacrifice? Let's look at it. You know, I, I've told you what the first sacrifice is already. I said that you are the altar and you are what? Someone says, Father, uh, whatever you give me, I give you. That's a sacrifice. But you must understand, that's secondary sacrifice. You are the first sacrifice. Romans chapter 12. You are the first sacrifice. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. We didn't get a rope. We used the tie, right? If we can get a rope, it will be good. If we can get the rope. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. Can you project or is it difficult for us to do that? Okay, Romans chapter 12. They're working on a, um, one of the systems, so they say it's difficult to project. Romans chapter 12. Verse 1. See what the Bible says here. I, I wish you can say it, but all of us will get to see it now. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Lord, that you do what? That you present. You, I want to look into your Bible. Everybody, the Bible is on the screen today. So find a way. I'm sure you have a phone that can connect to the Bible. So find a way and connect it to that phone. Okay, they put it on the screen right now. Thank you for doing that. So it says this. I beseech you therefore, brethren, that by the mercies of God, you do what? You present your bodies, what? Wow. He says, he says, first of all, you need to know that you, your body, is what? The living sacrifice. What does that mean? My brother, come. Yeah, come. This is what a sacrifice means. He says, you're not just a sacrifice. You're what? A living sacrifice. This is a living sacrifice. He's alive. He can do whatever he wants. But it's a sacrifice because what he does is controlled by the person that holds it. So, it, no matter what he wants to do, as fast as he sacrifice, he comes. God says, that's how I want you to be. You have your will, but your will is immersed in my will. Your will is swallowed in my will. That's what it means to be a living sacrifice. He has, he has the right to push me away. He has the right to reject me. But he's a living sacrifice because all God has to do is to pull him. The question I want to ask you is this. When God pulls you, do you resist or you respond? They are both reactions. Though. Question. Have you asked yourself that in 2022, what is God calling you into? Because God is always pulling us into something. God is pulling us. Are you like Jacob? The Bible says, and Jacob spent the whole night wrestling with the Lord. And then people understand the sound of my voice that the Lord is pulling you concerning dealing with an addiction and you're not checking it. Is that something you are hiding and the Lord is dealing with you about it and you're not checking it? Do you know some people that God is dealing with you about how you talk and you're not checking it? Some of God is dealing with you about how much you love worldliness and carnality and you're not checking it? And the Lord is dealing with some people about how you are so heady and selfish and you say, I'm an Ekiti man. Listen to me, Ekiti man, subdue to God's word. Humble yourself. Don't say things like that. You are a Christian. Because you are living sacrifice. He's calling you. All he's going to do is to pull you. And once he pulls you. See, you, don't, you know what, what the Holy Ghost is? Just resist me. Once you pulls you. Because the spirit of God does not strive. That's what the Bible says. He says, my spirit will not strive with man again. And that's why many people think they are not hearing the voice of God. No. You heard it. As soon as you struggle, they said, have your way. May God not leave it to yourself. I'm telling you. You are the first sacrifice. See what it says. He said, I beseech you pray about the mercy of the Lord that you present your body a living sacrifice. How do you know? He says, holy. It's what? Acceptable unto God. It's not acceptable unto media. Unto God. Some of you are acceptable in the office. That's not unto God. Are you acceptable unto God? What you're doing, is it acceptable unto God? How many of you have God been calling you into service and said, I bless you so much. It's time to serve with your life in church. 
and you're still hustling and you're still struggling. He said, accept him unto God. Then he says it somewhere. He says, when you do this, which is what? Your reasonable service. And I said something. That means you can do it in such a way. It's what? An unreasonable service. God looks at what you're doing and God says, this is unreasonable. Glory to God. Please look up here. Can I tell you the truth? By the time they were deciding your life, you were not there. So the fact that you think you can have the finance in your life outside God is a notion that has to be checked. When the meeting of your creation was done, you were not present. The meeting of your creation was designed before you came. God was not made for you, you were made for him. And that's why with all the success, there's this big hole. With all the success, there's this big hole. The reason why is that until you find your purpose and why God makes you, you will struggle. I'm a living sacrifice. I'm a, I'm a living sacrifice. I'm a living. I can go anywhere I want to go, but where I go is where he wants me to go. Praise God. If you know me very well, you know it took a lot for me to be a pastor. People on the outside thought it was so easy, but personally, because I had dreams, I had things I planned, I had expectation for my parents. But I knew something. I'm a living sacrifice. So the first way, so if you're going, and that's why you notice something. Let me say this to you. The level, the, the more you grow lesser in sacrifice, the more you don't make spiritual advancements. Sacrifice and spiritual growth, they are tied together. The more sacrificial you are, the more you grow spiritually. The less sacrificial you are, the less you grow spiritually. So someone says, I want to grow spiritually. You need to make more sacrifices. You know, um, when I had the gunshot incident, one of the biggest people in the, on the continent called me. He said, Pastor Bolaji, he said, why in the world do you even have to wake up so early to pray? And ask me questions. And I said, I don't want to wake up to pray. I'm compelled to wake up to pray. Whose dream is to wake up at 3 a.m. to pray? Maybe some of you, it's not my dream. I don't have a dream where I want them just fight for 40 days. No. But the reason those things are done, I'm a sacrifice. Is what the God says we should offer that we offer. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yes. Should you watch all this one video? They will say, consult the high priest. Tell him to tell us what the God wants. What the, we don't offer what we want. We offer what the God wants. This kind of Christianity where you want to offer what you want, how you want it, when you want it, and you have your variation on the Bible. It's not Bible Christianity. Yo. He's called what? Fake. The Christianity of the Bible is what he wants. That's what we offer. And I'm saying so because today, I really believe that there are people that God is pulling. See, what is God trying to take from you that you're holding back? I was reading just in my Bible, was it two days ago, about how, you know, it's amazing because God can be blessing you, yet you're in disobedience. God is, God is mighty. Oh. I'm telling you. You will not know. Something is it possible? Ask Moses. God was talking to Moses. They were having a chat. Go to go go to, go and go go and see Pharaoh. He went to Pharaoh. Did ham? Pa! Pharaoh saw miracle. Hey hey. When it was now time for Moses to go to Pharaoh, the Bible says an angel met Moses by the way. He was going to kill him until his wife circumcised her son and threw it on the floor. Hey! On one hand, he was doing well. On the other hand, he was in disobedience. Do you know that story? Glory to God. So the first thing is this, that sacrifice. And, and I'm, saying, I'm saying so because it's, it's going to change the way you think. See, let me tell you, as a Christian, let me give you a good word. Others may, I may not. You know, you're in this place, people are doing all of these things and 
Eating long. He said, I, what about you? He said, you know, I'm sorry, I can't. And someone says, why? Because I have deeper convictions. I, I may not even want to tell you I'm a Christian because there's no point of opportunity to explain to you, but I just have deep. So, but we all go to the same church. Others may, I may not. The way of the mortal is not the way of God. Sometimes it's the way of sinners. The Bible says there's a way that seemeth to right to a man. He said, wide is the road that leads to destruction. Narrow is the road that leads to life. Someone say, ah, ah. now wow, so religious. Sunday church, Wednesday church. Ah, calm down. <laughs> he said, thank you. I know where you want to lead me to. I will not follow you. Others may. I may not. Others may. I may not. Others may compromise their faith. Others may not take their faith seriously. Others may have others. Others may. I may not. Why? I'm a, I am a living sacrifice. I know my reasonable service. I don't want to be what? Unreasonable. I want to ask you a question. Everybody, here, you're here, right? A lot of you, if you have choice, you not be born in Nigeria, right? What about those born in Pakistan? I hope you know Nigeria is not the worst country in this world. What about those born in Iraq? Iran? Those that were born in, um, what's that country during the genocide? What's that country now? Rwanda. Hope you know a lot of people not go to school in Rwanda because there was genocide when they were born. And about 10 to 5 years of their life. So they cannot even go to school. Not what they want to go to. There was war. Because you behave as if you chose your country. Why, why, why did they even give it to me here? You're lucky you were not, you were not born in Cameroon. Those born in Cameroon, what should they do? Are you better than them? No. I'm only telling you that when it comes to the choices of your life, you didn't. See, it, once you know that, okay, I didn't give myself life, I didn't choose life, then you'll be humble. In the way you think about your life and the way you think about your choices and the way you respond to the one that gave you the gift of life. The second sacrifice is this. Proverbs chapter 3. Have we read Hebrews chapter 5 verse 1? Yes, let's read Hebrews 5 1 first. Then we'll go to Proverbs chapter 3. Oh, wow. Proverbs or Hebrews first, I'm sorry. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 1. He says, Every high priest is taken from men and is ordained for men in things pertaining to God that he may offer this is the work of every priest he may offer both gifts and sacrifices take note of this the Bible says the man is chosen he didn't choose himself you are picked out he's chosen amongst men for the things that pertain to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices and this is what I'm going to talk to as we close one of the first thing you offer is yourself. Don't wonder the songwriter says, Lord, I give you my life. I give you my soul. I live for you. Every step that I take, every moment of the way. Lord, have your way. That's what it means. So the first thing is that I belong to God. The second thing, what's the second thing? The second thing is this. Let's read. The Bible says every gift and sacrifice, that, that he may offer gifts and sacrifices. So what are gifts and sacrifices? The second thing which I will speak about narrowly is this, that the second sacrifice is our givings. Our givings. See, as a Christian, you know, as a Christian, why do we give? Our giving is a sign of acknowledgement. That God is involved in my finances. That's the truth. See, see what it says. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9. And this, yeah, Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9. See what it says. It says, honor the Lord with thy substance. See, the key thing is that if God walked with you to earn all this money, it says, show it by your giving. If God gave you the intelligence, gave you the favor, gave you the connection, it says, show it by. In Nigeria, it's simple. If I even help you get a house, you give me agency fee. God is not an agent. 
Neither is that small agency fee. It just says, use your money to acknowledge that I'm in, I'm in charge of your life. But the third sacrifice, which is where I'm going to stay. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So the first sacrifice is what? Myself. The second sacrifice is what? My resources, my money, my resources. The third sacrifice is spiritual sacrifice. Let's get into it now. This is where I want to stay. Psalm 141. So the Bible says this. Watch this. The Bible says the priest will bring what? A sacrifice. Yes or no? Question. In the New Testament, should we be, when we say a sacrifice, should we be bringing ghosts to church? So I say, let's, everybody say, ah, Pastor, I made my own talk here. I bought my own hen. No, I bought my own chicken. No. Oh yeah, sacrifice. We kill? No. In the Old Testament, they used to bring sacrifices, animals. But in the New Testament, because there's a different dispensation, what do we bring? Psalm 141. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Hallelujah. Psalm 141, verse 2. Do you have it? Oh. <laughs> How many of you went to white garment churches? Wave your hands. I, I went. I, I went. So, no, not that I'm waving my hands like to identify with you. No, no, I went. See our next church movement, Ian Opaja. I was the member. How many of you are in CNS Church Movement? You, KNS, Celestia, CNS Unification. Which one again? The Holy, eh? Aladura, Kogberegbe. I'm just telling the branches. <laughs> How many of you went? Wait, 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 let me see. Stop denying your background. <laughs> exactly. Praise the Lord. You should have seen Pastor Fonuke in a white sotana. Oh, wow. She was, she was so wonderful in a white sotana. <laughs> Praise God. So in those white garment churches, you will see them. They will take, when they want to start the service, they will take incense. They will put it there. You just see the prophets just come, me more, me more, me more, me more. You know, you just sing one song and he will spread the incense all around the place. He said, what is he? He said, he's chasing away evil spirits. Where did they get it from? Of course, it's in the Bible, in the Old Testament. Because the high pri the priest will come and offer up what incense. Someone says, is that possible? When Zechariah was in the temple, what was he doing? The Bible says he was born in incense. It's a question. Why does we not burn incense today? Some of you still burn incense at home. When they saw me, they'll say, take this thing, put it in your house. It'll change away something. Listen, the reason we don't burn incense today is this. Because the incense of the Old Testament is a shadow. It's a type. Of something bigger in the New Testament. What is it? Read the Bible. <laughs> hey! He says, this is, this is the spirit of prophecy. He says, let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense. What does that mean? When I'm praying, I don't have to be looking for a bowl and this and that. He says, anytime I'm praying, that incense that repels evil spirits, that incense that talks about the praise of God, he said, that's what my prayer does. The priest in the Old Testament will carry the incense and be doing this and doing that. He says, once we say, Father, we worship you, it's the same thing that we are offering one incense. Somebody say, hallelujah. He didn't stop there. He says, the priest will also come and kill animals. Where is about animals? Because many of you just say, when we just come to church, say, lift up your hand. He said, you do like this, hands up. No, lift up your hand and hands up are different. Lift up your hand and hands up. Hands up is what the police tell you to do. Hands up, hands up. No, that's not lift up your hands. Some people say that, you know, I'm not that kind of being, I'm a man. So, as men, you know how men worship we. <laughs> Lord, I lift your name on earth. Uh, you came from heaven to earth. I'm not emotional. <laughs> you, the reason why you be that way, you've not been taught. Because you think you thought lift up your hand is one someone in the choir. I didn't come and say No, no, no. See what lift up your hands means. He says, and the lifting up of our hands. Be what? He says, every time you lift up your hands, God says you just sacrifice to me. You know, in the world, when you want to play, you say, pledge like this. What does this mean? That's the sign of pledge. In the kingdom of God, the offer of sacrifice is that we lift up our hands. I said, we lift up our hands. We lift up our hands. We lift up. That's what it means. This is a spiritual sacrifice. Because every priest has sacrifice to offer. 
If we're not offering dogs and goat and turtle doves, what are we offering? We're offering prayers. We're offering prayers. We're offering the fruit. <laughs> we're, we're offering evening sacrifice by the lifting up of our hands. Oh my God. Are you ready? Look at what the Bible says in Hosea chapter 14, verse 2. Oh. Oh wow. Hosea chapter 14, verse 2. Thank you, Jesus. Hosea chapter 14, verse 2. Are you ready? See what the Bible says here. He said, Take with your words and turn to the Lord. Say unto him, Take all the iniquity and receive us what graciously. Then he tells us something powerful and says, And so we will render what? Question How can calves means goats, lamp? How can you be doing goats from your mouth? He says, By the time we start saying, Father, thank you, it's lamp that we are offering. <laughs> Listen to me. All the while in the Old Testament, when they were talking about lamp and turtle doves, this was what God was pointing to. He said, time will come. Oh my, yeah, da, 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 da. That's why when the woman met Jesus Christ at the well, the woman said, where do we worship? Is it in the mountain or in the temple? Jesus Christ said, you're making a mistake because she was saying, we need a place to offer sacrifices. Jesus Christ said to her, he said, women, from this hour, he said, now is the time when those that must worship the Father must worship in spirit and what? In truth. He said, it's not here or there. He's in their spirits. Oh, Radeha. Ah. Let me read one more scripture to you. Act 13 verse 1. Because you're going to get it now. So some of you are catching it gradually. Act 13 verse 1. Oh, glory to God. So as a priest, I, lift, I offer evening sacrifices by lifting up my hands. I bring incense by my prayers. The lips, the fruit of my lips, Father, I worship you, is the offering of calves. See what it says. Um, wow. Will you go to verse 2 quickly? Just go. Just go. This is what the Bible says. The apostles gather together. And the apostles were doing this. You know what the Bible says? And they what minister to the Lord. What's minister to the Lord? They were offering the fruit of the man. Minister to the Lord is not the kind of prayer you pray. Father, I need job. Father, I need... See, I want to ask you. This is the problem with prayer. Someone says, if all your prayers, give me, give me, give me, give me. How long can you pray for? It will always be short. Because your needs are not inexhaustible. Someone asks, what do you say for three hours? I say, eh? What do you say for? Because in his mind, hey, I pray for my children, I pray for their school, I pray for their health, I pray for my colleagues, I pray for Nigeria, I pray for... What are you praying for again? Hey, I felt so bad. I said, ah, the only prayer you know is the prayer of petition. Give me. Forgive me. Give me. Forgive me. Give me. Forgive me. Then you now add, I bind. I bind. Fire. Fire. Fall. Crumble. Because that's all you know. There are deeper prayers. I want to ask you, all of you that are married, what do you say to your wife for the past 15 years? 20 years. You have been told to, you call her every day. You call her, you talk at home. What do you say? It's a fellowship. Hey. Come on now. This is deeper. This is what we call deeper lessons in prayer. When you're not praying for things, you are praying to fellowship. You are offering the calves of our lips. Hey. In this kind of prayer, you forget every other thing. Bring my chair again. Where, where's the chair? Bring the chair. This kind of prayer, it, it's, it's not even... Okay, have another chair. Thank you. You know, no, no, you can leave it. Leave it. Thank you. You know, I sit on the chair. I'm just thinking what God is. I'm, I'm a priest. As a priest, I'm not coming to ask for something. I'm coming to offer incense. I'm coming to offer eating sacrifice. The fruit of my lips. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm just thinking you are great, oh God. You're mighty. Always like unto you. Oh, at the blast of your nostril, the Red Sea parted into two. You stood by Israel as a pillar of fire and as a cloud during the day. War is like unto our God. War is like thee, O God. Amongst the gods, there's no one like thee. 
glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, always doing wonders. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Salvation and glory, wisdom and power. Thanksgiving belongs to our God forever and ever. When you start praying like this, people are saying, people are leaving, we'll leave for the prayer point. This kind, there's no prayer points. This, this is you and God. This is you and God. This is you and God. <laughs> MP3, will you join me? Where's Abbey? Join me. Grab a chair. Come, come, come. Oh, Shandekaya Nanani. Where's MP3? Come, come, come. Join me. Ale Sile. Ale Sile. Ale Sile. Go ahead. Just lead us. Oh, Yanani. Meko Talida. Oh, Nanani. No. Abe, go ahead and lead us. happens when you start praying like this this is not the kind of lord bless me give me no 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 the first thing that happens to you is the assurance that the holy spirit brings there's a presence there's an assurance so you're thinking how will this happen how will that happen all of a sudden you can't remember the problems again you're wondering where are the problems where are the prayer points don't you know when god comes in everything fades away that the second thing that happens is this all of a sudden the eyes of your spirits the ears of where's Pastor Femi? Pastor Femi come you told me what happened to you during the first service as you begin to pray like this the eye of your spirit he's not even saying Lord show me something no need when we, when we, in the first service, what happened to in you? In the first service, as we had this, I had a vision. You, you had a, Were you praying for a vision? No, I wasn't praying. Exactly. Some of you, you're talking too much. Let's go. Let him. You must learn to be vulnerable with God so that he can speak to you. Hallelujah. It's one thing to say God said. It's another thing when you have an encounter with the Holy Ghost. What do you think convinced 
Moses to go back to Egypt, when they wanted to kill him, it was an encounter. What do you make, make Gideon the strong man? It was an encounter. When Peter saw the fish multiply, he said, depart from me, I'm a sinful man. This is what opens you up. This is what takes your Christian from I went to church. What is church? Anybody can go to church. This when church moves into your spirits. Even your wife will say, honey, what happened? Your husband will say, what happened? Because you have been touched. You have been crumbled, crushed, and repaired by the Spirit. Only one service. You have been touched, crumbled, repaired by the Spirit. You have been remolded. MP3 leaders. Oh. Just lift up your hands. <laughs> You are Lord, Lord.
I lift it up. Come and quench this thirsty of my soul. Sing bread of Take your time with God. Just you and God. Just tell him. Just tell him. Oh.
just imagine you praying like this as a father and your seven year old child comes in saying daddy all eyes soaked with tears all hands lifted towards heaven and that just stays in the mind of that child that God is not a place he's a person imagine that through your worst marital issues relationship issues or business you can have this moment and the assurance that will come to you and father thank you for calling us into a deeper place with you that's what you've been teaching us all this series to be different from the world to keep the fire burning are you teaching us about sacrifice spiritual sacrifice with the fruit of our lips with the lifting of our hands I'm asking oh Lord let there be some crumbling some shaking some tearing down at the same time some building up some repairing that will be everything you want us to be there are things that need to be torn away Lord please feel free and tear them down Lord please feel free and tear them down there are things we need to see free free and show us oh God please Lord don't abandon us to ourselves no matter no, ma no matter how long we've been stubborn please Lord please Lord it's because we are not seeing it's really because we are not seeing please Lord don't abandon us to ourselves don't abandon us to ourselves Judas Iscariot never had a second chance. Don't abandon us to ourselves. This we're asking of you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. If you can have your seat, you can have your seat.